Welcome back to Hollywood Dreammaker. I am excited to introduce my guest. She's a life and career coach with over 20 years in the entertainment industry. She also has her own management, Cultivate Entertainment. She's often asked to speak on panels about the business of acting. I want to welcome to the show, Kanika Sue. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be on your podcast. Well, it's an honor to have you. I'm so excited. You know, I created my podcast you know, during this COVID times because, you know, I had a little extra time on my hand and, uh, and I just really wanted to, you know, give, you know, all the stuff that I wish I had, you know, as a young actor coming out to Hollywood with 200 bucks in my pocket, not knowing anything about the industry. I had to make a lot of mistakes along the way. And, you know, I know where the potholes are and, you know, the, you know, just the agents and the managers and the photographers that, you know, I had to kind of stay away from. So I just want to add value to my listeners. And I think you're an awesome guest to have on the show because you are a manager. You've been in the business for a long time. You know, the ins and outs. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on the show. So welcome. And I have one question for you. So, you know, the, the, the podcast is called Hollywood Dreammaker Podcast. Can you tell me how you wound up in Hollywood? Oh, wow. So it has been 20 years, a little bit longer. And I, you know, it's interesting because when I was 18 years old, that's when I started in Hollywood, but I had no idea that the entertainment industry even existed. I never even thought about Hollywood. I actually wanted to become a broadcast journalist. And in my last semester of high school, you know, we received an application for this nonprofit organization called Inner City Filmmakers. And every year they take about 25 to 30 minority students from low income families in Southern LA. Um, and I applied for ICF. And, you know, the same day that I got my acceptance letter from ICF, I got my rejection letter from USC and their broadcast journalism program. So interestingly enough, though, that summer, ICF was teaching their classes at USC. I didn't know whether to be excited or whether to be sad and cry, but obviously in hindsight, everything worked out for a reason and inner city filmmakers put me on the path that I'm on now. Great, you're also part of the board. I am. I am on their board. I am also an alumni and a mentor to all the students who, you know, have gone through the program. That's awesome. Thank you. So, you know, I have a lot of actors here at the Manhattan Actors Studio, and I'm sure they have a lot, you know, they're always going like, how do I get an agent? How do I get a manager? <laughs> you know, I have all those questions for you. So, you know, for the listeners out there that are, you know, starting their career and they're looking to get some representation, what would your advice be to them? To slow down, to slow down and make sure that you are truly ready and prepared. And what I mean by being ready and prepared is that they've taken the time to get their craft to a place where they're confident to go into the room. And, you know, going into the room is not about booking the job. It's about booking the room and making fans, making fans of the casting director, the producer, the director. You know, I always say, as long as you're doing that, the bookings will come. Um, but even before that, when you're reaching out to an agent or a manager, you know, you want to have your pitch presentation ready. You want to make sure that you're putting your best self forward that they can see the potential that you bring to the table and that they can help you grow and take it to the next level you know that means having the right headshots that means having you know a clear resume that really highlights your skills and i can't say this enough training 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 you constantly, if you're not already on set learning, then you should be in a classroom. You should be working with a coach. I'm a huge believer in all of that. I agree 100%. <laughs> I'm constantly telling my actors that too. I mean, you have one opportunity when you go in front of that casting director. So you want to be 100% because, you know, if you walk in that door and you don't give 100%, 
and uh, you know, they might not bring you back into that room again. But if you go in there and you rock that room and you walk out confident, they're going to remember you. If you made some big choices and you're playing full out, they're going to become fans of your work. Exactly. You know, they want to discover you, you know, and the agents and, you know, the agents and the managers, they, they want to discover you too, but you have to give them quality material to work with, you know, and especially right now with how the industry has shifted, it's become very important that actors know how to self tape and actors know how to create that intimacy over the computer. I agree 100%. Uh, you know, right now I have uh, for my actors because, you know, everybody's kind of struggling right now financially. And, you know, a lot of my actors are waiters or bartenders or they, they work out at, you know, they work at a gym, they're trainers. And, you know, with everything closed, uh, you know, that doesn't mean it's time to lay down and binge watch Netflix. I'm telling them this is the time for you to get strong. This is time. It's a gift. This is not a bad thing. You have extra time on your hand. You should be reading scripts. You should be writing. You should be developing, you know, your self tapes. You're really having, you know, learn lighting, go Google three point lighting, you know, uh, learn how to edit, you know, find a tutorial on how to edit. So you can put all that stuff together, find the right, do a location scout of your house. You know, what wall would work great in this scene? You know, what's the lighting going to be the wardrobe of the character. So I, I created a 30 day self tape challenge for my actors. So they have to create 30 self tapes. And what they're doing is they're building a body of work. You know, they're, they're creating these characters and they're going to have that footage. So, you know, when that breakdown comes down and it says they're looking for a police officer, well, you have that, you have that little piece of footage that you shot, you know, you did that monologue playing a detective. So, you know, you're, you're going to be prepared when that, you know, opportunity knocks, you know, because I believe when the floodgates open again, there's going to be a lot of work out there. There's going to be a lot of work out there. There's going to be a lot of competition, a lot of people who want to, you know, get back on set. So absolutely, everything you're saying is, you know, get ahead of the competition right now. There are so many resources online. And even with these challenges, you know, casting directors are doing similar challenges via Instagram. You know, that's a great opportunity to get seen for when things are truly actively casting again. And a lot of the classes, these resources, they're being offered for free right now or at a very discounted rate. Take advantage of it. Great. So, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Social media. You know, when I, when I came out to Hollywood, there were, you know, you didn't, there were no cell phones, you know I mean? <laughs> the, you know, there was no social media, you know, and, you know, I can't tell how it's so important for actors to know, social media and you know it it's kind of sad that it's it counts so much because i mean i know as a as a you know a producer you know i was in a casting session with uh, one of my uh, my producers a writer and a thing and you know we were in a casting session and i love this one actor i was she was great you know that was my first choice but then you know my producer was going well she doesn't have any you know uh, she only has like 200 uh, instagram followers and the other girl the other actress had 50,000 so we kind of banged heads a little bit because she wanted the one that, you know, had the 50,000. I wanted the better actor that had 200 and, and uh, you know, it does, it counts. Now people are looking at that. You know, now people are looking at it and I have the same relationship with social media that you do, you know, it's hate love. But what I will say about social media and followers and the number of followers is that you know, at the end of the day, it just doesn't replace talent. It really doesn't. And I think we all discovered that earlier on when there was this huge hype over Instagram followers and social media followers and, you know, studios and networks were looking for who had the most. And then the influencer would come on set and they didn't have the training, the skills, the education, the know-how of a trained actor. So yes, social media can help, but it does not replace talent. So what kind of stuff should they be putting on their Instagram or their Facebook? You know, what, what's, what's the kind of material that they should be putting out there for casting directors to see? Quality, 
quality material, material that's really representative of them in a good light. You know, everything on the internet now, you really have to think twice about putting up there because if someone screenshots it, it lives forever. So definitely, you know, have to be careful of that. And, you know, I I do think it's a great platform for actors to showcase their authentic self. You know, people are interested in that. I also think it's a great place. A lot of my clients use it, you know, to showcase charities that they're excited about, causes, political views, you know, just aspects of who they are and what they believe in that's going to have an impact, a positive impact on the world in addition to the work that they're bringing to the table as artists. What is your take on self-tape? See, I, I, I have my own opinion and I'd like to hear what your opinion is. You know, like when creating a self-tape, what do you, what, you know, what do you do? How would you, what would you tell your actors to do to create a self-tape? Well, you know, I'm very old fashioned in the sense that nothing is better than being in the room. Nothing is better than being in the room and having that real raw energy between actors and, you know, with casting directors, producers and directors, that chemistry. Um, Obviously, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, that's not possible right now. So with self tapes, I do believe in them because I have booked clients in series regular roles, you know, off of self tapes. It's possible to do. And it's very much, you know, the same thing where you want to do your best to create intimacy in the scene. And the way to do that is to have the clean background, you know, to have the right lighting, to have good sound. So there isn't anything technical or even, you know, having the right reader that's going to distract away from your performance. Um, And, you know, the great thing about a self-tape, too, is you can do it until you feel in your heart and soul that you've given your best performance. I agree. I I don't think you should be an actor auditioning. You want to be the character in the given circumstance, fighting for whatever it is you need. And I love that you said intimacy. And, you know, for me, it's into me see. Mm. Yeah, show that. Show your soul. I Give a piece that. of your soul and, and leave that there behind. So when they see it and they feel it because you've substituted, you've personalized it, you made this truthful. You're not just an actor acting in front of a wrinkled curtain. You know, <laughs> you're the character in the given circumstances fighting for whatever it is, but you've loaded it up with your soul. You've give, you've made some big bold choices. And that's when, you know, a casting director or a director is going to they're going to take note because you didn't play it safe. You you know, you shouldn't have sides on in your hand if you're self-taping. No. If you have an opportunity to, you know, do it 20 times, if you like, there should be no script in your hand. You know, hundred percent. I agree with that because you are self-taping. There's no reason that you shouldn't be off book. You know, before you had sides when you went into the room, almost because you, you didn't want the casting director or the producer or director to think that that was your final performance. But if you're doing it on tape, yeah, be off book. And I loved what you said about in, uh, intimacy. I really, I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> you can borrow that. I'll give you credit. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so here's my take on it about self-tapes. And you know, you know, the clean background and everything, I get that and I respect that. But if I'm a casting director and I'm looking to cast uh, the cop, the detective, and he, he's interrogating, you know, the, the killer scene, okay? And it's that big monologue of, you know, where were you, you know, Saturday night at 8 p.m., okay? Now, if I see an actor against a, a wrinkled curtain, you know, a sheet, bed sheet hanging up on the wall and, you know, they're acting, and then I see an actor that's in the wardrobe of the character. You know, I don't know, is he in a uniform? Does he have a, a jacket on? I don't know, does he have a shield hanging from his, his neck? I, you know, you're showing me the character, where the character walks, talks, everything about the character. You know, maybe you don't shoot it on a, a wall that looks kind of, you know, fake. Maybe you find a, a real gray wall that looks like something in an interrogation room. You know, as long as it's giving you the sense of the place, you know, 
I want to see, I want to, I want to look at it and go, Oh my gosh, that's it. That's the scene right there. And like, give them the performance. If you have the opportunity to do it as many times as you want, make sure you have the wardrobe of the character on make, make sure, you know, you've really loaded it up. You have the right background. You have, you know, even maybe you light it a certain way. Maybe, you know, it's one of those bare bulbs, you know, in an interrogation scene where it's, you know, light coming from above just to give them the performance. So it's a no brainer. Oh, absolutely. You know, I represent a young actress who is very detailed and very specific in that way. She has such a strong vision for whatever role she's going to play. And she's actually a series regular in Cursed that's premiering um, on Netflix. And, you know, her character is Red Sphere, and what she ended up doing in the audition with her hair, her wardrobe, including a nose ring, it's very similar to how they ended up dressing her and doing her hair and makeup in the series. You know, I say change their mind. If yeah. they think they know what they want, it's your job to go in there and change their mind. You know, like I, I'll give you an example. My, my old TV series that I did with Matthew Perry, when I went on the audition, they were looking for a surfer dude from Venice Beach with a parrot on his shoulder. That's how they described the character. And I was like, no. You know, I grew up watching Happy Days with the Fonz, Henry Winkler, you know, the leather jacket. So I saw him as this type of character. So I wore the leather jacket, the wife beater, the gold chain, the perfect hair, and I played it like the Fonz. And they bought it and they rewrote the show and made my character, you know, I'd sit in writing sessions. They go, what do you think your character would say here? You know, so I, I mean, I, I've done that in my career so many times. I mean, you know, I once read for a film that that role was already cast, but I came in in a, you know, an LAPD uniform. And when they put me on tape for the cat, for producers, you know, the director said, I was watching tape. You know, I said, why did you cast me? And, you know, he says, I'm watching tape and I'm seeing an actor audition, audition, audition. And then all of a sudden you pop up and it was like, you were there. The cop was the, right there. It was, I didn't leave it to the imagination. I showed them cop. You know? show, them, show them what they're looking for. Show exactly. them what they need. Change their mind, you know, and, and how you change their mind is truly by your choices. You know, I truly believe talent lies within your choices. The bigger, the bolder, the stronger your choices, the better you're going to be. The more loaded up you've made this character and then you go in there and you're playing and you're having fun. Because I truly believe when you're having fun, the casting people, they're going to have fun watching you. you exactly. Know? And if you're bearing your soul and you're being truthful and you're loading it up with your truth, they're going to feel that because you're not acting. You're being nope. truthful. You're being truthful. You're being authentic. And, you know, take those risks. You know, as individuals, we're all different. That's how we stand out. And it's how actors need to approach the roles that they're playing as well. You know, as individual artistic beings take the risk, be bold. Yeah. And you know, stand in your, your power, you know, everything that's ever happened to you in your whole life, the good, the bad, the ugly, all that stuff. That's your goal as an actor. That's your, you know, that's your stuff that's in your actor toolbox. That's what you want to play with. You know, you want to, you want to mine that gold and that's what you're going to be giving. It's, it's all your, your truth, you know? So, you know, now in life, you know, Everything. I look at everything that happens to me, you know, and I go, uh oh, that's a gift. That's something from my actor toolbox. You know, that person cuts me off and I'm really angry. Well, I'm going to remember that person. Maybe I have to be angry in a scene. I'm going to put that person in and say all the things I wanted to say to that person, but I didn't get a chance to. Well, guess what? In the scene, I will be able to tell that person what I, how I felt. You know, because that's the right maybe. mindset to have, Billy. That's you know. really the right mindset to have, you know, and you're approaching, you know, your place as an artist with power and more actors need to do that and recognize that within themselves. You know, I think it's very easy as an artist, a struggling artist, as an actor starting out to have a sense of desperation and that's how you really hurt yourself and your career in the long term. Sure, they could smell that a mile away. Mm -hmm. Desperation, they could see that coming in through the door. The moment you walk yeah. into a room. Yeah. But you know what, you know, what I teach my actors is, you know, we're talking about mindset, you know, I'm a big, huge believer in mindset and I'm, I'm a huge believer in, you know, we all have this light within us, you know, this beautiful light within us. And a lot of times we tend to dim our light. We don't want to shine. We you know we're afraid to shine, but what if, you know, you got out of your head because, you know, when you're in your head, you're dead. And what if you got into your heart 
you know, and, and came from that, from that, that light and shining your light. So you walk into the room, you know, it's just the light within me is just coming to say hello to the light within you. I'm not coming here to get anything. I'm here to play. I love acting. I've created, uh, you know, I, I've done a backstory for my character. I know, I know this character better than the writer who wrote it. Because they didn't write the backstory. They didn't do the private moment exercise last night. They don't know what my character did last night. I do. I, I know where I come from. I know, you know, I'm walking a, a certain way because I'm a product of an environment. My wardrobe is based on, you know, whatever choices I made. And I'm coming in. It's trick or treat. It's Halloween time. It's I'm in the costume. I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> playtime. And, you know, when you come from that energy, from, from yeah. your light and play and passion and love, that, you know, it's a totally different vibration. You know, they're going to remember you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, you've said a couple of times about play and fun, and that's exactly what this is. You know, there's no reason for you to not have fun and to not enjoy every moment, the ups, the downs, the challenges. You know, it's a given in this industry, but it makes you stronger. It makes you a better artist. It gives you more perspective and it gives you experiences that you can bring to yourself as an actor, as a writer, director, producer. You know, it's, it's being human and, and that's okay. You know, yes have the fears, have the anxiety, have the sadness. We all have that. But then how do you turn it around? How do you make it happiness? How do you make it light? How do you make it strength? You know, th those are all the keys, like everything you're talking about. I love it. So do you have a pet peeve, you know, being a talent manager when actors, uh, you know, looking to get representation, something that, you know, they should not do? Um, okay, so don't send a huge, you know, don't make me a part of your distribution list. I can see it. It looks lazy. You know, be specific. Do the research. I want to see that you have looked at my roster, that you've looked at the clients I've represented, and that there is a place for you or that you feel that there's a place for you. You know, be specific in that. There are so many agents and there are so many managers out there. You want to find a right fit for you, put some thought into it. And that goes back to, you know, approaching it from a place of strength and power and not desperation. Um, you know, I think it's very easy for actors to be desperate to find representation and value yourself more in that respect. You know, you just don't want anyone to represent you. You want the right person to represent you that is going to champion you. And you'll have a better chance at finding it if you do the hard work beforehand. Love that. You know, I think, you know, actors should do their research as far as like, if I'm going into a producer session and, you know, who's the director on the project. And so you can, you know, the casting director, you know, do your homework. So you walk into the room, you know, who's who. You know, I've, I've Googled images of the director. I know he's the guy, the bald head that's going to be sitting over there, you know. So I'm not in, in shock in the room. I know, I, I know I've watched the film, that, the last film he directed. You know, maybe there's a conversation there. You know, I loved, I loved your work. Or, you know, now it's like, you know, it's personal. We're having a conversation about, you know, the actor that was in it or something, you know. So do your homework. Know who you're going to see. I remember a friend of mine, um, he was reading for... Uh, um, Taylor Hackford and mm -hmm. you know I asked him I said well who's the director and he said Vic Tabak and I was like Vic Tabak's the director <laughs> so I, there's a big difference between Vic Tabak and Taylor Hackford <laughs> you know Taylor Hackford has directed you know Officer and a Gentleman you know he's directed some amazing films Vic Tabak was you know a character actor that was an Alice no offense but it's the wrong person you want to know who you're going to see yeah, there's no excuse that you can't do your homework. I mean, IMDb Pro is a one-stop shop for all of that. And, True. you know, there's no excuse for not being able to Google. So, you know, you've been in this business a while. How has the industry changed in the past, you know, 20 years? Oh, wow. Gosh. Um, you know, it's hard to even think that far back. I mean, look, definitely I can say that there are more opportunities for diversity now, you know, even though the internet has made the world a lot smaller, there's a lot of crossover now. 
you know, um, it doesn't matter if you are based in LA, if you're based in New York, if you're based in Dallas, Canada, you know, wherever in Europe, Australia, there are opportunities and it's really come down to finding the best actor for the part, no matter where they're at in the world. Great. So if I'm an actor and I live in Texas, Mm -hmm. right? What would your advice be to me? Like, you know, getting started in Texas or Atlanta or New York? Well, I'm assuming that you're already in class and, you know, hopefully you have representation in Texas. And if you do have representation in Texas and you want to cross over, you know, into the LA market, start with your rep and have a conversation and see if your rep has any relationships with agents or managers in New York or in LA that can help him or her bring you more opportunities. You know, I think communication is key when it comes to your representatives. It does start with having a solid agent or manager and building your team from there. No one can do it alone. That's great advice. So management, you know, since you see what's going on out there, what's the future look like right now? I mean, is there stuff casting or, you know, I mean, I know I have friends that are on TV shows and it's been pushed and, you know, I don't know how, you know, films are going to get insured now with everything yeah. that's going on. You know, even looking back at history, the entertainment industry always survives. People are always in need of entertainment. And because we're so creative, we're going to find ways. So I know that all the unions are working together to come up with safety guidelines so we can get back into production. I do have a client that's going to travel soon to Atlanta to work for two months. I've had several clients who've had productions stop midway and they're gearing up to finish out the season or the feature film. So it's happening. It's happening at a slower pace. And we all just have to be flexible right now with the dates because things are changing so quickly and on a daily basis. But we will get back on set. I'm very confident about that. Do I think we're going to be back to normal shortly? Probably not until 2021. But you know, smaller productions will figure it out. You know, there's going to be less people, there's going to be COVID testing, temperature checking, you know, anything and everything possible to keep actors and crew safe. What advice do you have for actors that are feeling maybe unmotivated, stuck right now with COVID, like, you know, just kind of feeling lost? Motivate yourself, get unstuck, do something. This is not the time, like you said earlier, Billy, to be sitting there and binging television. You know, there's so much to do, you know, and again, even with what you've done with your classes and moving it virtually, you know, some education, some work on your skills and your craft is better than doing nothing at all. And you want to be ahead of the competition when things do go back to normal. So there's, there's no reason. Hold yourself accountable. Discipline yourself. You know, if, if this is the career that you want or whatever it is that you want, it's not going to come to you if you're sitting on your couch. There's always, always something to do. You know, my actors, you know, we've, I've made the pivot and we're online in my classes via Zoom. And I, we've been having so much fun on zoom i'm telling you the future is is all you know zoom because you know i can teach anybody if you're in australia you can you can now study with me you don't have to be in my my studio my brick and mortar now you can take my class anywhere so you know last month in my in my uh monday night class we created a short film with my actors wrote it i challenged everybody to write a monologue and then we took all those monologues and we incorporated them and, and brought them into we created a story a short film and we rehearsed it and then we shot it via zoom everybody was in their houses with their wardrobe <laughs> and their you know and it was so much fun 
not only was it fun, but it's almost like when I was directing my actors and watching them, it's like almost like when I've done a, a, a soap opera, you know, there's a, you know, a director in the booth looking at monitors, give me camera one, give me camera two. So, you know, on Zoom, when it comes to speaker view, you know, all of a sudden they're in their close up and then, you know, cuts to another ca camera, which is a close up. And it's, it's, it's amazing on how well that worked out. So I'm loving teaching classes online. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. And there's no reason why actors, you know, shouldn't be in class. I mean, we're in an industry that is innovative in how we get to be creative. So we should constantly be feeding that. You know, it's been an honor to have you on the show. I think uh, you, you're such an awesome spirit and I love what you do and how you coach. And you're more than a manager, you're a life coach. You know, you really guide careers. So I'm honored. Thank you for taking the time to uh, come on the Hollywood Dream Maker podcast. What's your social media so my, my listeners can follow you? Um, so if your listeners want to find me, I do have a website, KanakaSui.com, for my life and career coaching. And my Instagram is Cultivated by Kanika. Awesome. Once again, thank you so much for being on the show stay safe, stay healthy. You know, this will pass. And I look forward to maybe getting together and having some lunch once, you know, things <laughs> calm down a little bit. I would absolutely love to have lunch with you by the beach. It's been such an honor and so much fun. Okay. Take care. You too. Thanks, Billy. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Please rate, review, share this with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Please take whatever you get from here, the golden nuggets, and apply them to your career. Go after your dreams with passion. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done. I believe in you. Follow your dreams. I'll see you in Hollywood.